how can you lead a truly happy life as following god mean i should forsake all happiness what is christian hedonism hey friends welcome back to the channel this is the first of the series of the upcoming book reviews today we look at one of my favorite books desiring god the book desiring god is a modern day classic it is written by pastor john piper who is the founder of bethlehem college and seminary in minneapolis i read this book first when i was doing my undergrad studies in the hostel i remember the way my world view was changed after reading this book the book starts by piper telling us how he became a christian hedonist who is a christian hedonist Hedonism is a Greek school of thought which argues that seeking pleasure is the ultimate way to lead a perfect life. Christian hedonism is seeking pleasure in God. The Westminster Catechism answers the age-old question, what is the chief end of man? The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Now notice that it doesn't say chief ends of man glorifying god and enjoying him with the same end well why should we care too much about the intention of a 17th century theology what does the bible say what does the bible say about the chief end of man how does the bible teach us to give god glory does god command us to enjoy him 1 Corinthians 10:31 says whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do all to the glory of God Piper after meditating on the scriptures came to these conclusions about Christian hedonism the longing to be happy is a universal human experience and it is good and not sinful We should never try to deny or resist our longing to be happy as though it were a bad impulse. Instead, we should seek to intensify this longing and nourish it with whatever will provide the deepest and most enduring satisfaction. The deepest and most enduring happiness is found only in God. Not from God, but in God. The happiness we find in God reaches its peak when it is shared with others in the manifold ways of love to the extent that we abandon the pursuit of our own pleasure. So how does Christian hedonism change our world view? Let's start with conversion that is becoming a Christian. Jesus tells us the parable of a man who found a treasure in the field. He then in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. This describes someone who has become a Christian. A person who is saved discovers the treasure of heaven and he finds this much more joyful than anything that he owns. The kingdom of heaven is where the king rules. and longing to be there is not for the heavenly estate but for the companionship of the king so once we are deeply converted christ becomes for us a treasure of holy joy before we were saved we had no delight in god we enjoy food friendship productivity investments vacations hobbies games reading and shopping but not god god was just an idea a topic of discussion but not a treasure of delight going to church was more of a duty reading the bible was so difficult then suddenly it happened our eyes were opened first 
there was stunned silence of unspeakable beauty of holiness. Then the shock and terror that we actually love darkness. Then the settling stillness of joy that this is the soul's end. The quest is over. We would give anything if we might be granted to live in the presence of His glory forever and ever. Behind the repentance that turns away from sin and behind the faith that embraces Christ is the birth of a new taste, a new longing, a new passion for the pleasure of God's presence. This is how a Christian hedonist is born. If I take my wife out for the evening on her anniversary and she asks me, why do you do this? The correct answer is, nothing makes me happier tonight than to be with you. Anything else may put me in trouble. If I say it is my duty, then it is a dishonor to her. If I say it is my joy, then it is an honor. Unless a spontaneous affection for the person motivates you, your overtures are stripped of all moral value. How shall we honor God in worship? By saying it is my duty or by saying it is my joy? Worship is a way of reflecting back to God the radiance of His worth. Now we see that the mirror that catches the rays of His radiance and reflects them back in worship is the joyful heart. Piper then quotes the famous dialogue by C.S. Lewis in which he says, We are far too easily pleased. He compares us with an ignorant child who is satisfied playing in a slum, not knowing what it is meant by a holiday at the sea. We fool around with drink or sex or ambition when infinite joy is offered to us. We are far too easily pleased. We have settled for a home, a family, a few friends, a yearly vacation, a mobile phone. We can't imagine a holiday at the sea that is worshipping the living God. Every day is not a bed of roses. Some days are sore. Some days we are depressed and discouraged. But the Bible revises as Satan huffs and puffs and tries to blow out a flame of joy, we have an endless supply of kindling in the Word of God. Listen to the story of Little Bilney, an English reformer born in 1495. He studied law and was outwardly rigorous in his efforts at religion. But within him, he was lifeless. Then he happened to read a Latin translation of the New Testament. He read 1 Timothy 1.15 which says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. This one sentence through God's instruction and inward working exhilarated his heart, wounded him with guilt of his sins to the point of despair and immediately he felt a marvelous comfort and quietness. His bruised bones leapt for joy. After this, the scriptures began to be more pleasant to him than honey. The Bible is no empty word, it is our life. So we don't read the Bible just because we have to, but because of the immense happiness we get and we read even when we are not happy, because that is how God kindles the fire within us.
The Christian hedonist is often on his knees, just as a thirsty deer kneels down to drink at the brook. Jesus says, Ask and you will receive, that your joy shall be full. Such a clear call to Christian hedonism. Pursue the fullness of your joy. Prayerlessness produces joylessness. If you want to take a four-week vacation, you don't just get up one summer morning and say, hey, let's go today. You won't have anything ready yet. You won't know where to go. Nothing has been planned. You'd probably sit at home and watch TV instead of traveling. You have to plan ahead. So set a time, set a place, choose a portion of scripture to guide you. Make this a day of turning to prayer for the glory of God and for the fullness of your joy. Money is the currency of Christian hedonism. What you do with it or desire to do with it can make or break your happiness. The Bible is clear that what you feel about money can destroy you. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from their faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Picture a plane full of people, a politician, a millionaire corporate executive, sportsman and a kid. Imagine the plane crashes and all of them stand before God. They are stripped of mastercards, checkbooks, credit cards, clothes and books. Don't spend your precious life trying to get rich. Paul says we bought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of the world. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter what way the market is moving, God is always better than gold. Therefore, by God's help, we can be and we should be content with the simple necessities of life. Let your joy in God overflow in a wealth of liberality to a lost and needy world. There was a Cistercian abbot who was interviewed on Italian television. The Cistercian tradition was living in silence and solitude. The interviewer asked him, what if at the end of your life, you realize that atheism is true and that there is no God? The abbot replied, holiness, silence and sacrifice are beautiful in themselves, even without a promise of reward. I still will have used my life well. But let's look at what Paul says. In 1 Corinthians 15, 19, he says, If Christ has not risen, if in this life we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Paul chose a life that would be foolish and pitiable without the hope of joy beyond the grave. What about the pinnacle of suffering? Jesus' death on the cross. Hebrews 12.2 says, For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. This is the essence of Christian hedonism. In the pursuit of joy through suffering, we magnify the all-satisfying worth of the source of our joy. So in conclusion, the chief end of man is to glorify God and God is most glorified when we are most satisfied 
in him. I hope this review was useful to you. Do grab a copy of the book to read more. The link is given in the description below. Please do subscribe for listening to similar content. See you in the next one.